All right, you guys asked for it, so here it is, another video on federated learning research. In this video, we're going to be summarizing the main highlights of the advances and open problems in federated learning survey paper. If you're new here, I'm Mukul, and if you haven't come across federated learning, I'd highly suggest you check out my first video on it, which I have linked somewhere over here. The first thing to know is that federated learning research isn't just machine learning, it's interdisciplinary. It combines techniques from machine learning, cryptography, security, privacy, fairness, information theory, and so on. Now, because you, the target audience, are people who are interested in machine learning, but likely haven't come across formal security definitions, I'll gloss over the details of those in this paper, but I will have a separate video on attacks on neural networks that will be coming out next week, so be sure to subscribe. The overview of this video is as follows. First, we'll look at how the need for privacy in federated learning poses additional research challenges. Second, we'll look at the impact of non-IID data, how the client's data distribution differ from each other. We'll talk about how we can personalize models to overcome this. And finally, we'll wrap the video up with the discussion of fairness in federated learning. If that sounds great to you, be sure to tap that like button an odd number of times and let's begin the video. There are really two main techniques to preserve privacy, differential privacy and secure aggregation. Differential privacy involves adding carefully selected noise to the outputs to ensure privacy. This can either be done by the individual clients or the server level or hybrid approach. Now, ideally to preserve the privacy of the individual clients, we'd like to add the noise at the client stage so the server never sees the raw data. However, in practice, it turns out that adding noise at the client level isn't practical because each client has comparatively little data compared to the server where adding the noise to a large set of updates doesn't impact it as much. The second technique is secure aggregation, which is a cryptographic technique that ensures that the server can only see the aggregate of thousands of updates rather than individual model updates. And a bonus technique to preserve privacy is to add randomness in this process of device checking in or by shuffling the model updates sent to the server. It's important to remember that privacy is paramount in federated learning. Therefore, whenever we come up with any federated learning technique, we need to ensure that it composes well with differential privacy and secure aggregation. But it makes every research problem that much harder. Trying to ensure fairness? Well, the ideals of fairness and privacy counteract each other, as I discussed in an email newsletter I sent out to my subscribers a few months ago, which you can sign up in the link below. The techniques used to debug and interpret our models need to be adapted to work on data that we can't see. And techniques to optimize the communication bottleneck of federated learning don't play nicely, such as gradient compression and quantization of updates. Trying to handle straggler devices by letting each device asynchronously update the server rather than the server waiting for all devices to complete? Yeah, it turns out that doesn't work so well with differential privacy. This leads us on to our next point, the heterogeneity of the clients in the federated learning process. We can no longer assume that data is IID, that is independently identically distributed, clients can have different data distributions. This affects how long the federated learning process takes to converge. As you can expect, different clients with different distributions might provide opposing gradient updates. There's a whole line of research analyzing the asymptotic convergence of these algorithms under different data distribution assumptions. One way of trying to tackle this non-IID data is to try and even out the distribution so the clients have roughly the same distribution. The f approach trains a generative model on the server, which generates data for each of the classes that a given client is lacking. But maybe non-IID data is not a bad thing, and actually training a personalized model on each of the clients is not a bug, but actually a feature. In the previous video, I discussed one such approach to personalization called perfect average, which treats this as a few shot learning problem. The idea is to train a global model that can be personalized to each of the clients with just a few steps of gradient descent. As you can imagine, rather than training one model across all clients or a model for each of the clients, we can employ a hybrid approach. So we train a model for each cluster of devices and we can determine these clusters based on the topology of our network. For example, you might train a model for users in the UK and one model for users in Australia. So this is an open research problem, really. Now, there are a lot of papers that look at the issue of privacy and federated learning and also personalization. But one area of research that I think is vastly underrepresented right now is fairness. Fairness is an issue as the model we train might perform better on clients that have more data, marginalizing the minorities in our distribution. Moreover, the process of federated learning itself introduces biases 
whether that's favouring devices that can partake more often in federated learning, or favouring faster devices as these are less likely to be stragglers and thus be dropped by a federated learning algorithm. I discussed QFED average in the previous video, so rather than weighting devices by the proportion of data that they have, we penalise worse performing devices more, incentivising the model to improve performance on these devices. And you can see this as we raise the loss to the power of Q plus one. We can tune this hyperparameter Q so the larger Q is, the more these worst performing clients dominate the overall loss. And so the more fair it becomes. But there are also other papers like agnostic federated learning, which all look at trying to shape our overall loss function to incentivize our model to perform equally on all devices. However, there are multiple dimensions to fairness. You might argue for meritocracy, the devices that participate more in the training process should be rewarded accordingly. Giving better models to these devices would incentivize people to contribute to the federated learning process instead of holding the data for themselves. So one paper introduces the idea of a hierarchy of models being trained. The devices that have contributed the most to the data would get the best performing model, whereas the devices that only barely perform would get the worst performing model. And there's another paper that talks about weighting these models based on the quality of the gradient updates, like how useful were the gradient updates from a given device in training the model. So what is a good definition of fairness? Personally, I think this is more of a policy question than a technical question, because it really comes down to how you weight each of the stakeholders in your federated learning system. But let me know what you think. Comment down below which of these research areas you found most interesting. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like. And as I said earlier in the video, I'll be covering attacks on your networks next week, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.